Hey guys, welcome. Thank you for joining me today in the Wells Tech Garage for episode number 13 of Tech Connect. I'm here to answer all those comments and questions that you guys had during our last broadcast where we covered the generic side of the scan tool. Remember, it was modes 1 through mode 10. Uh, we were talking about mode 6 and mode 9 a little bit more in depth than the rest. And we did have some comments and questions from you guys related to this. So, starting with Jim. Jim came on and he asked, what models are we seeing mode 10 on? Uh, because we did not have mode 10 on our 2008 F-150. Well, upon further research, Jim, we found that mode 10 really started coming around in 2010 and became more commonplace on vehicle model year 2012 and up. So chances are if you guys are working on something older than a 2010, you're probably not going to find mode 10 on, on there. But uh, anything 2012 and up, you should see mode 10 on there. Um, again, it's not a mandate, but it is something that manufacturers are, are putting in there and allowing access to. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, mode 10 is going to be that permanent code section of the scan tool. That's going to be the PCM storing codes permanently until it decides that it wants to clear them out. So basically the PCM um, says, okay, we'll clear codes out like we normally do on the scan tool. It'll say no memory codes, no history codes, that kind of thing. Mode 10 will still store that information until the PCM has run and passed enough tests to clear itself out. So that's something good to look at when you're uh, looking for those problem vehicles, um, maybe purchasing a vehicle, that kind of thing, check out mode 10. All right, we had another comment from Scott related to mode 10, and Scott had read somewhere that mode 10 had a 400 day memory. And after doing some digging, I think Scott's onto something here, I found that mode 10 has a 399 day memory. So one day, not a big deal. But what I'm thinking here is what 300 days, 400 days, 200 days, I mean really, if you guys are getting code stored inside the permanent side of mode 10, chances are there's something else going on in the system. Because if you think about it, the PCM should run and pass those tests within really a certain amount of drive cycles in order to clear that out if the vehicle's in a good running operation. The only time that I think this 400 days might come into effect would be if the vehicle sits a lot, say it's uh, maybe like a show car, and it sits most of the time and doesn't get those drive cycles passed. Uh, maybe the little old lady's car who uh, just goes out to the grocery store and church on Sundays, you know. Those kind of vehicles, this 400 day memory might come into effect, but on a normal daily driven vehicle, back and forth to work or whatever, I really don't think you should ever get a permanent code up well over 100, 100 days, even more. It just uh, doesn't seem remotely possible on a good running system passing vehicle. Again, if you have problems inside that vehicle, problems with a code or uh, a certain component and it's failing tests, yeah, then you're going to see it inside of here. But on a known good vehicle, those permanent, show, uh, permanent codes should be cleared out relatively, uh, relatively quickly. So uh, great question, Scott and Jim. All right, then David came on. David was asking about mode six, and he asked, if I clear the codes in, inside the vehicle, just doing a clear codes, and the vehicle hasn't run the monitors, will I have accurate information inside of mode six? Or does the vehicle need to have the monitors run to do it? And that's a great question. We didn't talk much about how clearing codes affects mode six, and you're onto something there, David. If you clear the codes, it will reset the mode 6 data. So it's going to reset all your monitors and mode 6 data will be wiped. So if you're going to clear codes, check out mode 6 data first and then clear your codes. Maybe document that data and then clear your codes. Or uh, you would have to drive the vehicle, run through some drive cycles, pass some of those monitor tests in order to get information inside there. Because remember, mode 6 is going to be the non-continuous monitors. So something that's not being continually monitored except for misfire, which is kind of uh, for just throws it into mode six, but uh, except for misfire, all those other ones are non-continuous and need to run through their cycles and tests in order to give you any sort of pertinent information inside of mode six. All right, uh, Alex came on and uh, Alex was uh, thanking us 
for showing OEMOneStop.com. For those of you guys that don't know what that is, it's a, let's call it a portal to all of the OEMs technical side of their website. So a lot of it, if you go to Toyota or Chevy or, uh, excuse me, GM or, uh, you know, any of the other ones, a lot of it is paid for. You do have to pay to get access to their information. We used it to go to Ford's technical side of the website and Ford does offer us some free resources inside there and that's where we found that OBD2 theory in operation. And while that's not much of a bedtime story to read, it was really good information and helped us in diagnosing our 08 F-150 with our intermittent misfire concern. Um, it's really, I mean, the, the 2008 model year we were looking at had 173 pages, if I remember right, of OBD2 information. But that's like engineering level stuff that you guys can use. I, I don't know if I'd sit down and read the whole thing but you can use it and search through it when you're diagnosing those hard to figure out vehicles. Or if you're, uh, like we used it for, translating out mode six, tids, sids, and mids. That's a good place to do that. But remember guys, through that, through that uh, OEM one-stop website and then into the OEM's technical sides of their websites, a lot of that does need to be paid for. You guys out there that are doing module reflashing and programming, you guys are familiar with this kind of stuff. You go to those websites all the time um, for those of you guys that aren't doing it, you can sometimes find free information and resources out there, but uh, some of it does need to be paid for. And if you guys know any really good free resources out on the web for us to share with each other, go ahead and comment them in the box here and share what you guys are getting for, for good service information. You know, we're here to help each other out and share information and try and make everybody's, uh, everybody's day better. So by doing... Uh, by doing things like this and, and sharing this OEM One Stops website or even our own Wells VE website, there's tons of free resources out there. You know, it helps to try and make everybody's, all of our, uh, all you technicians out there help um, make everybody's day just a little bit better. So if you guys have any other questions or comments pertaining to our generic uh, scan tool, generic side of the scan tool class, our mode data, um, or really any of our classes for, uh, for that matter, go ahead and uh, shoot us out a comment here on the video here or on the, uh, any of our other videos. I'd be happy to answer all of your comments and questions related to our videos. Um, we love the feedback from you guys. We just love hearing from you guys and love to hear what you have to say, what you're experiencing in the shop, you know, some of the trends that are going on, that kind of thing. We love to, love to get that kind of uh, feedback from you guys. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get into our next class. Our next class is going to be December 1st, and that is going to be at our two time slots for our live broadcast. So it's going to be 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Central Time. Now, you guys are gonna have a little bit of a head start on the class because I'm gonna change up our t-shirt question just a little bit this time because it's the holiday season and I'm just in a little bit of a giving mood, everybody who sends me out a diagnostic test or procedure for the vehicle that we're going to be working on here will uh, have the opportunity to win one of our awesome t-shirts. So the vehicle that we're going to be working on in the shop on December 1st is going to be a 2006 Honda Odyssey. Now this class is gonna be focused on a step-by-step diagnostic of a of uh, it's an intermittent no crank no start concern and I can tell you guys right off the bat it's not a dead battery so don't give me that answer but uh, anything else relevant to the diagnostic of a no crank no start will win you guys one of our awesome t-shirts and I do have a little bit more of a surprise for that day but I'm not gonna spoil it here so you do have to join us on December 1st at 11 a.m. Central and 2 p.m. Central Time to uh, catch our live broadcast. Um, all right, I think that's about it for today, guys. So thank you for watching. Um, if you like what you see, give us that thumbs up and subscribe. Even head out to our wellsve.com website, hit the subscribe button on there, and we'll send you out email reminders of our next class. Also, guys, check out our other social media pages. We're out on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. 
Uh, we just posted a pretty cool album of all of our pictures and videos um, from SEMA. So check it out, guys. And uh, that's going to be it for today. So have a great weekend.